You are clear for launch. And with that, shut down your visors, O2 on, and prepare for ignition to O2. Hi there, my name is Chris Bradford, and I'm the author of Luna. And I thought I'm going to give you a quick reading from my book here. Now, this is the story of Luna. She loves living on the moon. And she really enjoys helping her father, who is a moon miner, search for precious minerals and rocks. But when a devastating meteor strike destroys the hub where they live, uh, Luna is left stranded and alone. With no shelter and few supplies, she must find a way to survive. The problem is, any hope of rescue is three days and 400,000 kilometres away. And her oxygen is running out fast. So let me take you for a reading. Let's get in the chapter. Chapter one, Rover. Slow down, Luna, my father shouts at me as we hit a bump and bounce off the ground. This Rover isn't a race car. Sport, sport, I reply and take my foot off the power pedal. My father gives me a look, and he's grinning as much as I am. You know I'd be in serious trouble if the hub commander found out I let you drive. You can easily crash a vehicle on the moon. There may be very little gravity, but objects still have the same mass, so the rover will take longer to stop than you think. I did listen in my lunar lessons, Dad, I reply. Even so, I have to break hard to stop in time for the mine survey spot. OK, last rock sample for this trip, says my father, putting on his helmet. I put mine on too, check my oxygen supply, then open the airlock to the rover's cabin. Everything goes quiet. In space, there's no sound. I could only hear the rasp of my breathing inside my helmet. <laughs> Hand me the core sampler, will you? Oh and I can hear my father's rather loud voice over the comms unit too. I pick up the core sampler. It's a drill with four metal legs that screw into the ground. On Earth, I wouldn't be able to lift it. Here, where gravity is six times less, it's as if I've got superpowers. I can easily carry it over to my father. Dad sets up the core sampler and fixes his feet into the ground. Then he begins to drill into the moon rock. I enjoy going on mining surveys with him. It's fun looking for precious minerals that we can use for building, turning into oxygen, or making rocket fuel on the moon. If we find something, we'll tell the crew at the hub that this is a good spot for mining. Best of all, we get to name the new mine. It's also good to escape the hub where we live. Yes, the hub's got food, air, water, TV, and all the other things you need to survive in space, but it sure is cramped. There are 30 other moon miners living there too. But most of all, the views when you go out on a survey are simply spectacular. It may be the same grey dust and rock everywhere you look, but glance out into space and you see Earth. Wow, it's like a big blue sparkling marble. There are no stars, of course, because it's daytime right now on the moon and about 120 degrees in the sun. That's pretty hot. But don't think I'm taking off my spacesuit anytime soon to sunbathe. You have to remember there's little atmosphere on the moon. If I took my helmet off, my eyeballs would explode. <laughs> Only joking. They won't explode. And I won't freeze or fry to death, at least not right away but the oxygen would be sucked from my lungs in just a few seconds. Breathing would be incredibly painful. The spit on my tongue would boil away, as well as my blood. Be told it's a fizzy feeling, like drinking a soda. Nice, eh? But it wouldn't last long. After 15 seconds, I'd pass out and then die from lack of oxygen. That's why I keep my helmet on. My visor begins to softly clatter, as if it's raining. Down and look up. Rain on the moon. It's falling on me. My comms unit bursts into life. Uh, Rover 3, return to the hub right now. Meteorite warning. Let's go, says my father. We need to get to cover as soon as possible. We jump into the rover, and my father takes the driving seat. 
we don't even bother to take off our helmets. He turns the vehicle round and speeds back towards the hub. We bounce over the lunar surface like some bucking bronco and I have to tighten my seatbelt. I thought you said not to drive too fast. This must be a big shower for the commander to call us back, Dad says, and grits his teeth. More micrometeorites batter the windscreen like hail. We crest a small hill and head down slope, picking up speed. In the distance appear a number of large mounds, the hub. Then the ground in front of us explodes in a bright flash of dust and rock. My father swerves to avoid the meteorite strike, but we're going too fast. We hit the impact crater, bounce high, and the rover flips. I hope you enjoyed that reading of Luna. If you want to find out what happens to Luna and her father after that, you're going to have to read the book yourself. So thank you very much for listening. Please check it out on chrisbradford.co.uk. See you on the moon. Thank you.